again, my name is Steve Hillis and this is the second in a series of videos on methodology and sociology and the other social sciences. Uh, this video we're going to look at testing causal theories. I don't think most people fully appreciate how strong a statement is when somebody says one thing causes another thing. That's an incredibly strong statement and it's a statement that requires a tremendous amount of effort to verify or falsify. Testing causal theories requires a lot of work and we're going to look at basically what you have to show in order to establish that one thing really does appear to cause something else. First of all, you have to show that there's correlations between the variables. Correlations are statistical relationships or associations between variables. Presumably you've gone out, you've studied something, and you've made observations, you've come up with data, and then you statistically analyze that data to see if there's some kind of statistical relationship between the two variables that you're studying. Now in this case we're only going to talk about two variables at a time, but of course statistical analysis can become a lot more complex. Again though, we're going to focus on correlations between two variables here, and I want to start out by pointing out that correlations uh, have at least three basic properties. You, you can talk about the direction of correlations, the strength of correlations, and finally the statistical significance of correlations. Let's start out talking about the direction of correlations. First of all though, we need to point out that not all variables are correlated. Some variables are uncorrelated. For example, the price of eggs in Moscow and I don't know, uh, sunspot activity. If you were to actually go out and gather data on those variables, you'd probably find that when you calculated a correlation coefficient, it'd be very close to zero. In other words, they have nothing to do with each other. If you find that your variables are uncorrelated, you're probably done at that point. Because if they're uncorrelated, one isn't causing the other. But in a lot of cases, you find out they are correlated. Some correlations are positive. When one variable increases in value, there's a tendency for the other variable to also increase. They're positively related or directly related. So for example, your GPA and how many hours per week you study were probably positively correlated. An increase in studying, higher GPAs, and higher GPAs, more studying. Which is causing which? That's an open question for right now. But for when you do your statistical analysis, and if you find a positive correlation between those things, it suggests that maybe one is causing the other, but it doesn't prove it. Now, if you studied other variables, you might find negative correlations. Negative correlations involve one variable decreasing in value and the other tending to increase in value. That's a negative relation or inverse relationship. So for example, the more time you spend watching TV per week, the, the greater number of hours of TV watching per week, might correlate negatively with your GPA. More TV watching, lower grades. Lower grades tend to go with uh, more TV watching. Now, hopefully by now you have a, just at least a general sense of the difference between positive and negative correlations. Let's move on to the strength of correlations. Correlation coefficients can vary in magnitude from plus one all the way to minus one. There's no such thing as a correlation coefficient of plus 20 or minus three. That doesn't even make sense. The, the strongest positive correlation, plus one, a per, perfect positive correlation, and the uh, lowest negative correlation, minus one, or a perfect negative correlation, that's as low as it gets. And of course correlations can uh, uh, take any value in between plus one and minus one, with zero in the middle, meaning there's no correlation. As you move towards one endpoint of that scale or the opposite endpoint, correlations get stronger. Let's talk about positive correlations, the right half of that scale. As you move from zero all the way to plus one, the positive correlation is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. What does that mean? Well, it means that the stronger the relationship between the two variables allows you to predict one variable more accurately if you have information on the other variable. Correlations allow us to estimate values of variables given other variables. The stronger the relationship between those variables, the more accurate our predictions. A different way of putting that is our, well, we have less error of prediction. So, if you're looking at, I don't know, uh, the relationship between people's height and their weight, let's just assume that's positively correlated, and it probably is. 
if that correlation was plus one, a perfect positive correlation, then if you told me a person's height, I could perfectly estimate, perfectly predict someone's weight, and I'd never be wrong. Likewise, if you give me somebody's weight, I could accurately, perfectly predict their height. Now, in reality, you and I both know that that's unlikely. The correlation between height and weight, even if it is positive, is probably a lot weaker than one. Who knows, it might be uh, uh, 0.5 or plus 0.3. The weaker the positive correlation, the more error of estimate. So if you give me someone's weight, on average, uh, I'll, I'll be right in terms of the direction of my production. The heavier someone is, I'll be able to capture the idea that they tend to be taller, but a lot of my estimates are going to be off. And the weaker the positive relationship, the more error of my estimate, the more I'll tend to be off, the more often I'll tend to be off. In an estimate, my ability to predict, accurately predict, the value of one variable given the value of the other one begins to break down as correlations move closer and closer to zero. And at zero, well, I won't be able to predict anything. The same basic logic applies if we look at the left-hand side of the scale. Correlations of zero all the way to negative one. With a correlation of negative one, I can perfectly predict uh, the relationship between variables, and as the correlation becomes weaker and weaker, my ability to estimate or predict values of one variable given the other begin to weaken. That's what the strength of the correlation is all about. Finally, we have statistical significance. Statistical significance allows us to guess or estimate how likely it is that the statistical relationship that we observed is real, or whether it's a fluke, dumb chance, random luck. You gotta realize statistics are, well, random. So sometimes when we gather data, we're going to see a correlation between variables that isn't really real. It's like going to Las Vegas and, I don't know, playing the roulette table. Sometimes you get hot, sometimes you get cold, but that's just random variation. In the long run, you lose money. That's Las Vegas. A similar principle applies when you talk about statistics. Sometimes you gather data and it looks like two variables are correlated, maybe even very strongly correlated but that could just be a fluke. If we make a few assumptions and if we calculate the right statistics, we can estimate how likely it is that our results, our observed correlation, is likely to be real or unreal, or not real. Now, we're not gonna go into the fine details of how to calculate correlations or how to calculate tests of significance. This isn't the statistics class. The one last thing I'd like to say in terms of uh, correlations for the time being is to emphasize one more time that correlations are not the same thing as causation. If two variables aren't correlated, then they aren't causally related, but it doesn't go the other way around. Just because two variables are correlated does not necessarily mean that one is causing the other. And even if one is causing the other, it doesn't tell you which is causing which. In other words, don't fall into the trap of thinking that correlations, even strong, statistically significant correlations, imply causation. Don't fall into that trap. And we'll explain a little bit more later on why that is a really basic fallacy. Now we're going to turn to a second uh, uh, thing that you have to demonstrate in order to uh, test causal theories, and that's establishing proper time order and establishing the direction of causation.